So if you want to ask someone in Spanish, hey, what are you doing? The best way is... ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué haces? But we can also ask in Spanish... ¿Qué estás haciendo? So if we can use both ¿Qué haces? and ¿Qué estás haciendo? as a translation of what are you doing, which one should we go for and why? Now in this video I'm going to answer this question, well, I'm going to attempt to answer this question, but firstly we need to set some background. Now in a recent YouTube video, I discussed the situations where we should never use the gerund form in Spanish. And what's interesting is that almost always we use the gerund form in English in these situations. So for example, I'm afraid of flying. This in Spanish would be, Tengo miedo de volar. Tengo miedo de volar. Literally, I'm afraid of to fly. Now I'll leave a link to the video here and in the description below. Now the useful thing about that video is that the rules are very clear cut. We cannot use the gerund form in those situations, period. But after watching it, a lot of students have asked, well, Andrew, when should we use the gerund form in Spanish? Well, in contrast, this question is not clear cut. In fact, I've been resisting making this video because it's not about right and wrong. It's about more common and less common patterns in Spanish. Now, in our level two course, El Cuenta Cuentos, we spend two hours on this question. What are the common patterns? When are natives more likely to go for the gerund form and when are they less likely to go for it? And it's a difficult topic to teach because again, there's no right and wrong answer. If we suggest that the best translation of what are you saying is ¿Qué dices? ¿Qué dices? Then it's hard because we can find examples of natives using ¿Qué estás diciendo? In fact, the very next line in that last example that I found is exactly that. ¿Qué dices? ¿Qué estás diciendo, Paulina? Now, if English is your first language, one of the most important things I can teach you about this topic is how your English brain will influence your decision making when you want to speak Spanish. So in English, what do you do and what are you doing are very different questions. What do you do is really asking about profession, and what are you doing is asking about the thing you are doing right now. Now these translated into Spanish are ¿En qué trabajas? ¿En qué haces? ¿O qué estás haciendo? And as an English native, you'll be tempted to go for this one because it looks like this, and you'll want to avoid this one because it looks like this. Similarly, what do you say and what are you saying are again very different questions in English where what do you say is kind of asking for opinion and what are you saying is asking about what is coming out of the person's mouth at that moment. Now we could translate these into Spanish as ¿Qué opinas? ¿O qué te parece? And then ¿Qué dices? ¿O qué estás diciendo? Where again, the temptation is to match these and avoid this option because it looks like this. So how do we decide between ¿Qué haces? ¿O qué estás haciendo? ¿En qué dices? ¿En qué estás diciendo? Well, the first thing that I want you to keep in mind based on what I just showed you is that you're probably going to have a preference for the gerund if English is your first language. And Spanish natives are generally going to have a preference for the simple present form. And so if you want your Spanish to sound more natural, in general, it's going to be better to go for the simple present tense form. ¿Qué haces? But in addition, we have three tools available to us for helping in the decision-making process. Now, firstly, again, referencing our level two course, we introduce a band list. This is a list of verbs in Spanish that rarely occur in the gerund form. It doesn't mean never, just means rarely. Now, hacer and decir are not on this list because they do occur in gerund form from time to time. But a good example of a verb on the list is Querer, to want. Now, while it is possible to say I'm wanting, estoy queriendo, this phrase is really rare in Spanish. And so this verb appears on our band list. Now, another tool we have available to us is emphasis. How much emphasis do we want to put on our statements or our questions? So for example, imagine you want to ask someone, hey, what are you talking about? But you might want to play it kind of cool. You could ask, de que hablas? ¿De qué hablas? ¿De qué hablas? Now, in contrast, maybe you might be really worked up about something. So you want to ask, ¿De qué estás hablando, Julián? ¿De qué estás hablando, Julián? ¿De qué estás hablando, Julián? Now, in this scene where I found this clip, Julián is trying to break up with her. So in response to this relationship is not working, she says, ¿De qué estás hablando? What are you talking about? And so the gerund form might be appropriate if we need to express shock, 
extra emphasis or emotion. Now, the last tool that we have available to us is habitual versus out of the ordinary patterns. Now, compared to the other situations we've already looked at, this one translates the best between English and Spanish. And so if something is normal and occurs habitually, then we should use the simple present tense form. So for example, you might want to ask someone, hey, do you work here? Trabajas aquí? Trabajas aquí? Trabajas aquí? Now it is possible you might want to ask, are you working here? But this might be more appropriate if it's a brand new job or you knew the person was working somewhere else very recently. And so if something is new, a change from routine or out of the ordinary, then we can go for the gerund form to make the point. For example, if someone asks you, hey, where are you? And you want to say, it's that I'm working outside of Madrid for a couple of days, which is a change from normal because I'm normally working in Madrid, then we would say in Spanish, que estoy trabajando fuera de Madrid unos días. Que estoy trabajando fuera de Madrid unos días. Que estoy trabajando fuera de Madrid unos días. Okay, let's do some practice together, noting that the answers to these questions are a preference for a common pattern and not necessarily right or wrong. Okay, so first example, he's always wanting more. How do we say this in Spanish? Siempre quiere más. Siempre quiere más. Noting that siempre está queriendo más is possible, but very rare. This week, I'm studying a new topic. How do we say this in Spanish? Esta semana estoy estudiando un tema nuevo. Esta semana estoy estudiando un tema nuevo. Hey, what are you eating? ¿Qué comes? ¿Qué comes? Again, noting that ¿qué estás comiendo? is possible, but not as common. Okay, as always, if you enjoy this lesson, please do all the things like... Subscribe if you're not already and share the video with someone you think would get value from it. And then leave any questions you have in the comments section below. Okay? Until next time, habla mejor, entiende más.